Another very important factor to remember about viscosity is called viscous drag. Viscous drag is the force that acts on a sphere while it is moving through any fluid. And by definition, it is uh, given by 6 pi eta rv, where eta is the viscosity of the fluid, r is the radius of the sphere, and v is the velocity of the sphere. So as an example, a sphere of radius 1 centimeter is dropped into the glass cylinder filled with a viscous fluid. The mass of a sphere is 12 grams and the density of the fluid of the liquid is t uh, 1200 kilograms per meter squared, per meter cubed. So it is definitely thicker than water. The sphere reaches a terminal speed of 0.15 meters per second. What is the viscosity of the liquid? The question says, I have a mass that is immersed, a sphere of radius is dropped in a glass cylinder, so the rho of the liquid, so the rho of liquid that it gives me is 1200 kilograms per meter cubed, and it says it has a V terminal velocity of 0 0.15 meters per second, and it is giving me that the radius of the sphere is one centimeter and its mass is 12 grams. So when I convert it, I'm not gonna do it again and again. This is gonna be 0 0.01 and this is gonna be 0 0.012 kilograms uh, of the sphere. So this is of the sphere. And all of this information is given. And what it's asking me is what is the viscosity of the liquid? Okay, so eta is what I'm looking for. So in order to solve this problem, what I need to do is draw a free body diagram. So what are the forces that are acting on it? Well, one of them I know is going to be mg and buoyant force. Okay, now the next question is, since this actually has drag, what direction should the drag be? Okay, if I, I drop this object in here, the drag has to be upwards because it opposes the, the motion, the direction of motion. So now let's write my force equation. Sigma F will be equals to FD, FB, and MG, right? If I take my positive axis to be upwards, that means this is going to be plus, this is going to be plus, and this is going to be minus, right? And then it says that F equals MA, right, when it starts to drop, but at terminal velocity, at terminal velocity, acceleration goes to zero, which implies this will go to zero. So what are we left with? FD plus FB minus MG equals zero. So that is what we are left with. Okay, so now be, let's, let's do um, something very carefully here. So I know that if I have a sphere, that is given by the equation that was given on the last page, and that was six pi eta RV plus buoyant force. Buoyant force is going to be given by the mass of the liquid times g, okay? Whereas this is the mass of the sphere times g. And all of them are equals to zero. So mass of the liquid can further also be written as Rho liquid, V liquid. Since the mass of the liquid is not given, but rho of the liquid is given, and I can pretty much figure out the liquid that is displaced by the presence of this sphere inside it. Okay? So that is why I am doing this. Minus the mass of the sphere times G. Plus 6 by eta RV. Okay, where V is a velocity, and that is now going to be the terminal velocity, which is also given to me. Okay, and the answer is going to be equals to zero. Okay, now let's start plugging the numbers in, or let's first move things around. So this is going to be minus rho of the liquid, volume displaced, G, 
plus mass of the sphere g divided by 6 pi r v terminal will give me eta. And now I can start pl plugging values in. Well, rho L is going to be 1200. V displaced is going to be the same as the velocity of the, uh, as the volume of the sphere. And why is that going to be true, the volume of the sphere? Because it's all immersed in it. So the, um, the amount of water that that one displaces is equal to the volume of the sphere. And volume of the sphere is going to be given by 4 thirds pi r cubed. You have r, you can plug that in here and solve for it. Same thing, g is 9.8, mass of the sphere is given, which is 12 grams. g is again 9.8, so is r is given and terminal velocity is given. All you have to do is solve for v, plug it into all of these numbers, and my eta comes out to be 2.42 pascals. So for me, pascals seconds. The drag force comes out to be 2.42 pascal seconds. Surface tension. The surface of a fluid acts like a stretch membrane. Imagine stranding on a trampoline and when you're dra dragging it, it kind of stretches. There is a force along the surface of the fluid. So surface tension is a force per unit length. So here's another very interesting question. Assume a water strider um, has roughly a circular foot of radius 0 0.02 millimeter. The water strider has six legs, as shown in this picture here. What is the maximum possible upward force on the foot due to the surface tension of the water? And what is the maximum mass of this water strider so it can keep from breaking through the water surface? In this case, it gives us a wa water strider that has a roughly circular foot of radius 0 0.2 millimeters. Okay, so we have a water strider. It has six legs. And each of its leg has a circular area. And that area is going to be given by pi r squared, right? Because it's circular. Um, and the question is asking me, what is the maximum possible upward force on the foot due to the surface tension of the water? So first things first, it gives me in radius r, which is 0 0.02 millimeters, right? As soon as I see the word millimeters, I know I have to convert it into meters. So this means it's going to be 1 meter divided by 1,000 millimeters, because that's how many millimeters are there in the meter. So millimeters will go away, and I will get my radius in terms of 0 0.02 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. Now having said that, it asks me what is the maximum upward force on the foot due to the surface tension. Now in order to do that, I need to draw a free body diagram. So this is my strider now in a free body diagram. I know that there is always a weight that acts downward and this water strider is sitting, whether it's sitting on, on the ground or whether it's sitting on, you know, on water, weight is always going to be downward. Now the upward force that is going to be provided by the surface tension of the water is going to be given by F up. Now, the force upward that is given by the surface tension can easily be calculated by using the formula pressure times area. Now the pressure in this case will be given by 2 gamma over r, and the area is going to be pi r squared. Now watch very carefully. In terms of algebra, this is going to be r cancelled with this r, and we are going to be left with 2 gamma pi r. Now all we need to do is plug in the values. The value of gamma is 0 0.070 newtons per meters, 3.14 for the value of pi, and r is given by 0 0.02 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. Watch what happens. m goes away, and my answer finally is in terms of newtons, 
So this implies that force is equals to 2 times 0 0.07 times this times this, and the units are going to work out and they're going to be in newtons. So this implies force, if I plug in the values and if I do it correctly, is going to be 9 times 10 to the power of minus 6 newtons, which is a very, very, very tiny force. Now for part B, it says what is the maximum mass of this water strider so that it can keep from breaking through the water surface. Now what do we know about this uh, force that is upwards? We know that this force has to be divided all over all of these legs. So this force is equals to the weight of the water strider divided by 6, which means I can also write mg over 6. Part A gives me a force which was 9 times 10 to the minus 6 newtons equals m is what I'm looking for. G is always 9.8 meters per second squared divided by 6. If I rearrange this equation slightly, not slightly, but it's going to be 9 times 10 to the minus 6 newtons times 6 divided by 9.8 meters per second squared should give me my mass of the water strider. So the mass of the water strider, if I plug it into the calculator, is going to be this. So in order to appreciate how little this mass is, I am going to rewrite this mass as 0 0.00055 Oops, sorry, one more zero. 0 0.0055 grams. Which is going to be a tiny, tiny, tiny mass.